Chris Foy, people talk about time but VAR is getting decisions right. Referees have always been in favor of technology that helps us get more decisions right, especially the big game-changing ones. We have seen some really good examples of its use recently. The red card for the Grimsby player at Palace, for example. That was after he had been given a yellow card. VAR has the benefit of looking at the replay and seeing where the point of contact was and advising the referee. The review of the Kane offside decision was an excellent example of VAR. The correct outcome was achieved. I don't know if Chelsea showing footage of it after the game can set a dangerous precedent. The angle they provided post-match was given by their own analyst. The VAR has the use of all the broadcast camera angles in the stadium which are supported by Hawkeye and they have the offside software that was extensively tested. I think the system we have operated has worked really well. People will always talk about time but it is about getting the big decisions right. We talk about key match decisions, those game-changing decisions. We are seeing VAR getting more of them right. We are still in a trial period and I think it has been really successful. Here comes another big week for VAR. The Carabao Cup semi-final second legs take place before the FA Cup fourth round gets underway on Friday at the Emirates. Video technology took center stage in the League Cup first leg as Tottenham beat Chelsea and was again being debated for its use in the FA Cup third round. The accuracy, usage and need for the system have been called into question by pundits, fans and ex-pros ahead of its return this week. Is VAR getting the big decisions right? Are they taking too long? Are we getting too obsessed with marginal offside decisions? James Sharp takes a look back at the controversial incidents so far. Bryson's goal ruled out for offside Southampton v Derby, FA Cup third round replay what happened? Craig Bryson thought he had put Derby ahead after 38 minutes only for Martin Waghorn to be judged by the VAR to be offside in the build-up after two minutes deliberation. Did they get it right? Just about. Waghorn's right foot appeared slightly ahead of Janik Vestergaard, although the call was so tight that pundits and former players still can't agree. Gary Lineker thought it was too tight to decide. Jamie Carragher tweeted there was no doubt and compared it to the goal line clearance made by John Stones in Man City's victory over Liverpool, where 1.12 cm of the ball had not crossed the line. Harry Kane offside overruled Chelsea v Tottenham. Carabao Cup semi-final first leg what happened? Harry Kane latched onto a long ball, was brought down by the goalkeeper inside the box, but the linesman had flagged for offside. VAR overturned that decision and awarded the penalty. Did they get it right? If you took the images available to the VAR and shown on TV, yes. If you believe the pictures produced by Chelsea's backroom staff, no. Another issue was whether the linesman flagged too early. Had the referee spotted his linesman's signal and blown before Kane had been fouled, the penalty would never have been awarded. FIFA tell officials to keep flags down on marginal calls as if the play ends with a goal or a penalty the offside will be checked anyway. Penalty farce at Burnley Burnley v Barnsley, FA Cup third round what happened? Burnley were awarded a penalty but VAR overturned the decision. Did they get it right? Yes but it produced farcical scenes. When ref Simon Hooper blew to reverse his decision, Mtej Vidra thought he was signaling him to take the penalty. Vidra was three steps into his run-up when he realized what had happened. Andrew Fox's red card Crystal Palace v Grimsby, FA Cup third round what happened? Grimsby left back Andrew Fox was shown a yellow card for a foul on Andros Towns and only for it to be upgraded to a red by the VAR. Did they get it right? Yes. Fox's studs caught Hounds and Flush on the shin in a reckless challenge.